evening, everyone. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. If you are brand new to this channel, I welcome you. We like to sit and listen to Dave Ramsey debt telephone calls past and present, see what we can learn from them. Always make sure you have your teacup because we're going to spill the tea. I had to get a new teacup. I busted my uh, last teacup last week. So new teacup. I decided not to go with glass. We're just going to go with a nice Starbucks mug and my little teaspoon. Okay, so make sure you grab your teacups. Let's go ahead and take this down. This uh, episode just ran last week, so this is nice and current, although we can always learn from past stories, all right? So let's go ahead, and as I was sound checking this real quickly, by the way, it turns out this is a letter, so this is not going to be a phone call. It's going to be a letter call in, all right, because I have to sound check each uh, video before I play it, lest I spend an hour yakking and then find out the microphone wasn't turned on, and yes, that's happened before. All right, folks, get cozy. Let's hit it. You need to get over yourself. Brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. All right, Kenneth asks. Hi, Kenneth. I borrowed thirty-five thousand dollars from my father, but only repaid seventy-five hundred because of my expensive lifestyle. What? Uh, okay. Now, as I said, this is a letter. When I was doing my sound check, it's a letter. So let me see here. Borrowed thirty-five thousand from his dad and he only repaid 7,000 because he feels he should have a privileged, privileged life. So what do you do? He repaid like 28 K 28 K paid back. Well, it's clearly too early to pour tea. So I guess we'll just keep finding out what's happening here. This just ran last week, family. This is very recent. You only repaid $7,500 because you're a person who lacks integrity. But we'll go from there. That's crazy. When he updated his will before he passed, he deducted the remaining $27,500 owed from my portion of the estate. You know, he sound, that's, that's something my mother would do. And the bill is, hey, you know, to each their own. But you know what? It's fair. Especially if you're dealing with other children in the family. OK, I am very fortunate. I have very generous parents, not just generous in love, but generous in, you know, what they do for their children. So thank you, mom and dad. OK, um, but still, I, I never take that generosity for granted. It's a choice that they do for us. It's not something they have to do. I need the rest of my inheritance money. I live in a semi expensive neighborhood and I'm not in good health. What should should I do? Oh, well, I can tell you what you should do right now, buddy. But expletives cannot be said on this somewhat, somewhat family channel. So he borrows 35 k from his dad, respectively, pays back 7000 The father in the dad's will takes away the portion that uh, he has not yet paid off. And now the, I think, is Kenneth is the son? Kenneth... Okay, and now Kenneth, I believe is the is the letter writer, is saying, wah, 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 my lifestyle is expensive. I have bills to pay. I don't care if they're medical bills. You downsize your life. 840 square feet right here, family. 840 square feet, okay? You downsize your life. Because what would you do? What would you have done if your dad had not given you a dime? See, that's what you do. You live as though your parents gave you nothing because your parents owe you nothing. Number one. <sighs> okay, John, take a deep breath there. Do you feel safe? John, are you safe right now? Because you're looking a little pale there. Now, I know some of you uh, walk and exercise. So you may not be looking at the screen, but the bar underneath the screen says, and I quote, I need my inheritance money to fund my lifestyle. Wow. Can we get much more um, entitled and pretentious than that? I need my inheritance money to fund my lifestyle. You know, if I knew I had a kid like that right off the bat, I would just draw you out of the will right then and there. Right then and there. I live my life um, as though my parents will leave me nothing. Okay, that's how I live my life. If my parents leave me something, that's a blessing. It is a gift. And you've heard me say that before. But my parents expect of their children... We are to lead our life in a financially responsible way. It took me a little time to play catch up, but I did get it. Okay. 
And that, and we are, that's how we're supposed to live our life. We do not live our life going, oh, gee, I hope our parents leave us something. My parents could leave me nothing. It would change nothing of what I've done, what I am doing and what I will do. Because that's how my parents raised us. You picked the wrong two people to write into, you, brother. You did. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And, and the student loan chit chat channel, we ain't, we ain't too happy with you either, Kenneth. Now, you see, family, this is different from people like me. Just allow, allow me to, you know, interject this here. People who go for things like, you know, student loan forgiveness, even a bankruptcy. We had a call um, last week where a lady was feeling very guilty incredibly guilty. Her brother passed away. She had uh, medical bills. One of the few calls we've ever, ever listened to where there were medical bills as part of the problem. Okay. But she had medical bills, was going through depression. Her brother, it appears probably died, you know, uh, younger than expected. Okay. Um, at least listening to her and she, and, and she got public service loan forgiveness, PSLF. And she was just feeling guilty. She, she, you could, you could hear it in her tone. OK, that's one way, you know, she needed the bankruptcy. She needed the PSLF. She's a federal employee, 14 years. That is different than this, where somebody's going, well, I, I need mom and dad to give me my inheritance money. or I, I can't make it without it. That's greed. That's selfishness. This is a whole this is a whole different uh, table setting here. Um, you need to move, you need to get over yourself, and you need to go to your local church and ask for forgiveness from both... <sighs> entitlement? Yeah, my God Almighty. I said entitlement. I said entitlement. Oh, by the way, well, let's, let's do this first. Snaps for me. <clears throat> Yay, me. Yay, me. And people, I think we also, if I'm so correct, as you know, I keep everything on my notepad now. I've gotten good family. Um, as you also know, I believe we now have the tea. So I think we are ready to pour tea. All right. So everybody get your teacups or your tea mug because this isn't glass and it won't bust on me. I hope that makes a decent sound on the microphone. Get your teacups, family. Get your teacups. Don't worry if you don't have a teacup today. You can always get one for tomorrow. Okay, family, you know the routine. Let's pour that tea. <sighs> That's just so refreshing. So we have the gist of this. For those who are new, we pour our tea when we think we've gotten the gist of the phone call and the tragedy of it sometimes, all right? Um, yeah, so it looks as though he is blaming what I assume is now the deceased father. I, I, I think the father's deceased. All right. Or if the father's not deceased, he already knows he's getting less. I haven't quite figured that out yet. I'm going to assume that possibly the father's deceased, but he needs his inheritance money to fund this lifestyle. Wow. Absolute greed. Good for your dad for deducting this amount of money. Yes. Let's give dad a round of applause. That you didn't pay him back because you lacked character and integrity, not because of your expensive lifestyle, but because you chose to live expensively over you chose uh, over your word that you gave your dad, and he deducted it from his estate. Good for him. So I think father may be deceased. That's excellent, absolutely excellent. That was part of the agreement. Not excellent that he's deceased. It's excellent that he deducted the money from the estate. Oh, jeez. Lord, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Whoops, I think I just deleted it. Hold on, people, I just lost this. Hold on, I'm not even going to stop the camera because I pretty much know where I was at. Oh, hold on just a second. You live in a semi-expensive neighborhood. Why? Because it's his money. There we go. Not yours. Mm. And I'm going to say something's going to get me in trouble, so I'm going to be quiet. What do you think, Jade? I say go for it. No, I'm just, okay. I, I hate this entitlement. I hate this. That I think a lot of this, normal people, kind-hearted people, I think we have a lot of expletives running in our heads right now. A whole lot of expletives. That's mine. I hate this. I, I hate, I can't stand all of this. I just, it's nonsense, 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 nonsense. As though my choice to drive a fancy car and live in a big house overrides math 
and it overrides character and it overrides mm-hmm. integrity. And more importantly, it overrides my relationship with my dad. Yeah. You know what the most important thing is? That I got expensive lifestyle. Shut up. Shut up. You know, you know, I, I can tell you, I miss my mom and late step dad so badly. I can't keep their picture in my bedroom because I would cry every single night. It's just, it is what it is. Debt that's, never matters to people until it's debt that's owed to them. It's, and it's not like, debt. It's not debt. It's not debt. No, it's not. That's the thing. Like, but I'm saying, like, for him, it's easy to look at this 30, for Kenneth, it's easy to look at this $35,000 that he borrowed and go, I don't need to pay that right away. Like, it's no big deal. I can, well, just I, this- I'm only going to pay 7500 of it. But if the tables were turned. And- oh, he'd want that money pronto someone owed him $35,000 he'd want the money today well let's be real clear about this he my dad deducted the remaining balance owed from my portion of the estate this is not (laughs) your estate yeah this is your dad's Dad's. estate Ooh, that's good that's good he yeah god kenneth what a what an ass (laughs) I would be so disappointed to think I had family like that. We, I was very, very lucky. When my parents passed, you know, there are seven kids. No, nobody argued. I mean, nobody argued. Of course, my parents also had the will wrapped up pretty tight. Good luck arguing. But the matter is, the fact of the matter is, people do argue over it. Um, which just whittles away the inheritance to, the, to you know, the attorneys. But I, I feel very, very blessed that I have siblings that are... They're just not greedy. And was it perfectly down the middle? No, no. You know, like I, I don't live in Oregon. I don't I don't need access to the beach cabin. OK, I don't drink wine. Don't need access to the vineyard. OK, it's it, it, it's a blessing. It's a gift. That's what it is. If one parent left 90 percent to one kid and left me 10 percent, I'd be like, hey, they thought of me. But this is how I was raised. Everything doesn't have to be 50-50. It's okay. And it's his prerogative to dole it out however he wants to. Mm -hmm. He could give you a fish tank and a hammer and a high five. And that's what would be yours. I wish that's what he had given him because I think that's what the guy deserves. What a selfish kid. You, because you're an entitled brat, looked at how much he owed you probably tripled it Mm -hmm. and then you spent that money in your mind and then when it didn't come to you in the form of a check you got uh you threw a little temper tantrum and you said well i want my money it's not Mm -hmm. yours it's not not yours yours. he could leave all of his money to your brother or your sister which is what i hope he did and look at you and say you're not you were not a son that um, honored your word and so I'm going to choose to spend my inheritance. I'm going to choose to divvy up my estate in a different way. He's allowed to do that because it's his money, not yours. I can't imagine being a parent and thinking that I have some selfish, greedy ass kid just waiting to get their hands on my money. Holy cow. I want to live as little of my life without my family in it. I want my family around as long as possible because I want to live just as little as possible without the minute because there is no amount of money that could ever replace who they are, their spirit. And just knowing that they're in the world, have you ever known people like that? And, and not just with family, but that close friend, just knowing that the person is in the world makes your world better. Even if you don't talk every day, even if you don't see each other a lot, you know, I, I have a gal pal I've known since I was 26 years old. Okay. Haven't seen her in a few years. We went for almost 10 years and didn't see each other. No, geez. Probably went to 13, 14 years and didn't see each other. Okay. But whenever we get together, it's like time stops. We all have those type of friendships. At least I hope you have at least one. Okay. And it's like you get together. It's like nothing was missed. Even though the kids are now raised, they may or may not have gone through a divorce or two. Um, You know, the puppy's now a full grown dog. I mean, time just passes, but you can get together with them and it's like, you know, it was as if you had just met yesterday. So this guy being so greedy and so selfish and seeing it as money, that's just, um, it's shameful. I wouldn't have left him a dime. 
Actually, what I would have done is I would have said, okay, here's the balance of what you owe me. I'm deducting that. And then the rest of it, I'm donating to your siblings or to charity or whatever. I don't think this, Kenneth shouldn't have, shouldn't have gotten a dime. That's just my opinion. Never was yours, never will be yours. So stop referring to it as your portion of the estate, as your inheritance money. This Kenneth is the type of guy who will also blow the inheritance. Then he's going to go to his brothers and sisters, whomever he's got that he knows also has some of it. And he's going to try to get theirs as well. He'd be the type of guy. This is the type of guy to do that. This, this is this is the type of guy to file bankruptcy. Okay. And I was talking about this um, last week with that lady who filed bankruptcy. And she felt just horrible. I felt horrible when it happened. This is the type of uh, donkey that, um, you know what word I'm really thinking, okay? This is the type of donkey that would file bankruptcy because he feels like he's owed the bankruptcy. After all, he tried to live his lifestyle and it just didn't work out. He wouldn't go into bankruptcy like I went into it or like, you know, most innocent people go into it. You know, we've tried holding the two jobs. We've cried our eyes out. We felt shame. We felt embarrassment, guilt. We felt the whole nine yards. One of the worst things that's ever happened, okay, emotionally. This is the type of guy to file, go into bankruptcy and go, well, you know, you owe it to me. It's not. Case closed. If it's not your money is what he's saying. You can't afford to live in your semi-expensive neighborhood and you're not in good health. Then you need to move. You need to get on the exchange and try to get some health insurance. You need to figure out something else to do. But mm -hmm. sitting around complaining about money that's not yours and that never will be yours and legally or otherwise – um, is a waste of your time and energy. And, and this is the type of guy that would try to challenge the will. I'm gonna be real honest. This is the type of guy that would try to challenge it. I think it might have a hard time though. As long as the will is written up and it's clear as to what each person got, I think he'd be waiting and spinning his wheels. But still, this is the type of person that would try to do that. I'll be quiet. Mm. Standing ovation. Good job. That's my second Rihanna reference in a very short period Sometimes of time. Sometimes you was need. Good, John. A couple of Rihanna references just to balance the world back out. <laughs> that was good. Okay. <laughs> you're right. This it was piss, very it just ah uh, if you if you've been around me, I don't get Pop mad. Pop off, I, John. I don't get mad about n hardly anything. I never do. In fact I, I You don't. I get too much criticism for not getting fired up about stuff yeah. enough. I can see this bothers you. I like it. I <laughs> can't this cause this this is our our, our country. The government owes me. My professor owes me an A. No, he didn't. You didn't do A work. Mm. You didn't do A work. My do, do you know there are even some schools, thank God, not mine. There are, I've read stories about where student work should not be marked in red because it's emotionally damaging to them. I read an article on that a while back. You know, should, should grades be marked in red ink? All right? <laughs> it's like, okay, whatever. I, 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 I pay uh, this whole attitude. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Be quiet. Yeah. I had a conversation with my son. He's, he's uh, 14. He's going to be leaving um, uh, middle school and heading to high school. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to have more poignant. We've been having breakfast together once a week for years. And we're starting to move into more of a poignant, hey, here's kind of my thoughts on alcohol as you get into mm, high school. Here's cool. my thoughts yeah. on sex. Uh, we talk about sex all the time in my house, as you can imagine. But um, here's some more specific things. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to start being more specific about like – you know I believe in, in God. You know Jesus is important to me. You know my faith is important to me. Here's what that looks like, and here's my seasons of doubt, and here's my seasons when I walk to. I'm, real it's, talk. It's more intentional. Yeah, real talk. That that's about the age my mother started doing that too. I'd say probably about well, high school when I was going to school was ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade. Ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade, and uh, it was basically you know when you decide you want to get to that point, please don't do it. And if you can't talk to me about it, here's the name of my doctor. And it was kind of interesting because I think her openness about it actually helped delay it. I really think it did um, because it wasn't a big secret, you know, um, it, it just wasn't. So it's like it's almost like if you tell a kid, don't do it, what do they want to do? Do it. So my mother was like, no, not going to tell you what to do or not do. I will answer any questions you have. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable talking to me, I'm going to give you my doctor. Wasn't like I ran out the door that week and I said, all right, you know, have your doctor dial me up. It probably, probably was about a two, three year span. And I think a lot of it is because she didn't hide it. So I think these types of conversations when they get into high school is kind of important. And 
we were talking about his grades recently, and he said, but I've been working so hard. And I said, I know. But you are entering into a season of life that for the rest of your life, effort does not as matter doesn't matter as much as the outcome Mm -hmm. and like and that's something that's really tough for some kids to learn i can tell you being a teacher and i was not the a student growing up a matter of fact i was i was a struggling c student english was my second language Um, i was adopted at four and a half from vietnam i did not speak vietnamese i actually spoke french don't know a word of it because i was adopted too soon and they didn't really have the multilingual schools like you have now Um, But I never spoke Vietnamese. I was in a French Catholic orphanage. And, you know, one of the things that it's a hard lesson to learn is, you know, some people, at least in the term, in the world of academics, some people are just academically more mature, quicker. They pick up the academics faster. So what I might spend, you know, four hours on, somebody else might be able to do it in half that amount of time, if not less. It's just part of growing up, right? We have to see it in front of us. Mm Mm-hmm. And this attitude of you just give me mine because I can choose, mm-hmm. I can do what I want, mm-hmm. and the effort, I hit, it's not real. Yeah. And this kind of nonsense is breaking up families, it's breaking up culture, it's breaking up communities, and it's insane. It's insane. Can Kenneth be upset that his brother and sister got more money than him? Sure. Be mad. That's fine. Yeah, you can be upset, I guess. But see, here's the thing. I would think that before you even got to the point of being upset you would know why they got more you had a strained relationship um you never thought of them you never called I mean I I I have a hard time believing that somebody would get zero in a will and truly in their heart of hearts have no idea why all right have absolutely no idea why but move on with your life yeah move on move on with your life well and if your life is well planned you've already got your plan laid out anyways right this is why and you've heard me say it on say it on this channel before people don't look at money that hasn't been given to you yet i don't care if it's through a job i don't care you know full-time job part-time job inheritance lottery winnings whatever until that check is in your hand it ain't yours it's not yours you don't get to just live in an expensive area and be like "Ah, that's what i wanted no dude no yeah, it's, that's a really good point. Be mad and move on. And, and All right, folks. I think we've got the gist of this for bedtime chit-chat story time. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I hope you guys had a uh, wonderful evening. I will be back tomorrow. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to thank you all for being here. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. I'll see you tomorrow. At least that's the plan. Good night, everyone.